quick revision video on hydrogen 1 or proton NMR. So we'll start with some basics. It works with hydrogen 1 nuclei because they have a property called spin and that's because they have an odd number of nucleons. Nucleons are the particles in the nucleus and in a hydrogen 1 nucleus you've just got one proton and no neutrons. The spectrometer measures the amount of radio wave energy absorbed to resonate the nuclei. And finally, nuclei in different environments absorb slightly different amounts of energy to resonate. So in the exam, we've got this on the data sheet, and these are the chemical shift values for the um, groups that we would be tested on. And you can see there it says the chemical shift values are relative to TMS, tetramethylsilane, and that's used as a reference molecule and assigned a chemical shift value of 0 ppm. So when you're running a spectrum, you need to dissolve your sample in a solvent. So a typical solvent would be something like CdCl3. And that's just a trichloromethane molecule where the single hydrogen has been replaced by a deuterium atom. So that's an isotope of hydrogen with a one proton and one neutron. Even number, so two nucleons, no spin. So it wouldn't give a signal. The reference molecule, TMS, looks like that. So we'll run through some essentials now of proton NMR. So it tells us the number of different hydrogen or proton environments, and that's from the number of peaks. We can tell the type of proton environment from the chemical shift value, that information from the data sheet. We can tell the relative numbers of each type of proton, and that's from the peak area or the integration value it's called. And we can also tell the number of protons adjacent to a given proton or within three bonds of a given proton and that's from the splitting pattern. So we'll just go through the splitting patterns and remember that's utilizing the n plus one rule. So if you get a singlet the hydrogen causing the signal has no adjacent hydrogens within three bonds so zero plus one gives us the one. Doublet must be adjacent to one so 1 plus 1 is 2, so we see a doublet. Triplet must be an adjacent CH2 group. Quartet, adjacent CH3 group. A quintet, there must be four adjacent hydrogens. A sextet, there would be five adjacent hydrogens, and so on. And we'll just finish this slide with talking about the OH and NH signals. So they always appear as singlets, they don't get split, and they are removed by adding D2O to the sample. They're a bit of a problem, these signals, because they have such a wide range, as you can see on the data sheet. So if you add D2O to your sample, the deuterium in the D2O can swap with the hydrogen in OH and NH, and the signal would disappear, because remember, deuterium has no spin. So we'll put all this into practice now by looking at this quite simple spectrum of uh, something with molecular formula C2H6O, I have got a specific playlist called Structural Determination Walkthroughs, which you might want to check out because I go through actual exam question um, spectra, various spectra. So this is just a simple one just to show you all of the stuff that we've just talked about in action. So the first thing we can see, we've got three peaks, so there must be three hydrogen environments in the molecule. The 1, 2, 3 above the peaks are the um, peak area or integration values. So the best thing to do is to count them up, add them up, so you can see it adds up to 6. And so that tells us that the area in each peak, or the number of hydrogens associated with each peak, must be the actual number of hydrogens in the molecule. It's not a ratio. Sometimes it is a ratio. So if I just put the data sheet on the top there um, and we'll start looking at the peaks. So the first thing to say is that's the TMS peak. Sometimes it's shown, it is in this spectrum, um, sometimes it isn't. So the next peak we'll look at is this one here. So all we're going to do is refer to the data sheet. It's obviously an HCR environment. So I would, next to each peak, I encourage my students to just write down what the information's telling us and then put it together at the end. So HCR, it's a triplet, so the protons causing the peak must be adjacent to a CH2 group. 
The area is 3, so that must mean it's a CH3 group causing the peak. And so this molecule, or this is telling us that in the molecule we've got a CH3 next to a CH2. And those red hydrogens are the ones causing the signal. So the next peak we'll look at is this one here. So again, go to the data sheet. So our options are HC to O, HC to Cl, HC to Br. Well, it can't be the halogen ones because there's no halogen in the molecule. And it's not going to be an OH because it's not a singlet. So you can't get an OH coming out as a quartet. So it's got to be the HCO environment. It's a quartet, so the protons causing the peak must have an adjacent CH3 group. The area is 2, so it's a CH2. So the blue protons there would be responsible for that quartet. And you can see in the environment it's H to C, the single bond O, and it's also adjacent to a CH3 group. So at this point I would be looking at the molecular formula. We've got both of the carbons sorted. We've got five of the hydrogens and the oxygen. So all we've got left is a single hydrogen. So that must be that peak there. And it must be the OH hydrogen, which it is. So it's a singlet. Remember, OH is always appear as singlet. And there's that little reminder about D2O. So, and the area one confirms the um, OH. So the molecule is obviously ethanol.